Hi, welcome to Keys Mods. This is David Fine. I think you're gonna really enjoy this video. In our last episode, we spent one night on Big Pine and No Name Keys surveying mods. Just two months after Hurricane Irma, we were so encouraged to find 50 species of mods in one night, even with an equipment malfunction. So uh, we can't wait to see what hap turns up in months to come. But this episode, I think you're not gonna wanna miss it. We're gonna have an interview with Christy Killam. She's the park ranger and director of visitor services in Key Deer Refuge down to Lower Keys. She's gonna share with us some of the impacts, environmentally speaking, on the Lower Keys from Hurricane Irma and what the United States Fish and Wildlife Service is doing to help those efforts. And so you're not gonna to wanna to miss it. Stay tuned. Uh, we're here with Christy Kellum from the uh, Key Deer Refuge. How are you doing today? Good. How are you guys doing? Yeah, so the big question's been, it's been what, about two months and change since Hurricane Irma came through. Yes. And the big question is, it has been, how is the butterflies and moths going to survive a, a storm where literally this entire island was under storm surge? Is that correct? Yes. More or less? Yes. There was probably three feet of storm surge right here where we're standing. So, so this was three feet deep. So Lorenzo would have been kind of like the, the water was this deep, the ocean water was this deep right where we're standing a couple months ago. And she says that the, all this vegetation was all uh, wind blown and there was no green. And we actually have some Google pictures from, from satellite images that prove that. Um, but the question was, are there gonna be any moths? And we put our lights on and within, within a couple minutes, I mean, this has been one of the fastest times where we've gotten some moth activity at the sheet. Just We just had the light on for 15, 20 minutes now, and we've already got all this activity flying around. So, Christy, tell me about the, um, tell me about the uh, uh, hurricane and, and some of the, maybe some of the points that have taken place, and biologically speaking, since, uh, since the hurricane slammed here about two months ago. Yeah, so it's pretty incredible. I mean, about five days before it even hit, it was on track to hit us with, and the wind speeds were 185 miles an hour. So at that point, people were pretty panicked and like pack up your stuff and get out. And it yep. was set to hit right in this area here. And everybody's hopeful that it'll wobble and go back and forth. But it kept coming and kept coming and kept coming and it did. It ended up, it hit right here. The eye was right in this area here. Uh, Key West Weather Service kind of predicted that consistent winds were in the 120, 130 mile an hour range right. with gusts that hit 150 to 160 and it literally ripped all the leaves off the trees. It either right. burnt them like with sun and wind whipped or literally ripped them off, snapped trees in half, uh, pulled trees out of the ground, uprooted them. So if, if you could see in the forest right now, there's trees snapped in half, trees down. That's throughout the hammocks. Throughout the hammocks, throughout the Pine Rockland. It was everywhere here in the Lower Keys, probably from Cudjo Key all the way up here to right. uh, Big Pine and No Name Keys. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So, so how the deer, I know that's the question that everybody's wondering, how the key deer are fared well, through the storm? Amazingly, within just a few days, some of these, some of these species of plants started sprouting leaves again. Within just a few days after the storm? Within a few days. It was absolutely amazing. Some of this stuff, I think like black bead, mahogany, hog plum, there's yep. this little plant called goat weed. Um, so some of this stuff, even within a few days to a few uh, weeks came back, initially we were really concerned about the key deer, as, sure. as the rest of the wildlife sure. too. But we started seeing them sporadically, um, and then all of a sudden we started seeing more and more of them, and they definitely seemed a little shocked. They were kind of more skittish than normal. Yeah. Um, They're like, what just happened? What do, yeah, and then we were like, how does an animal, you know, hunker down through, there are, there are you see, like, if you look at parts of this island, there are boats upside down in trees, 10 feet up in the air, and Incredible. you're thinking, how did anything survive, you Incredible. know? So, um, so look, it, well, look what we got here. Little green and old chasing a moth. Oh, yeah. 
See him? Oh, See oh. the little green and all? That's beautiful. How cool is that? He was just chasing this moth, but uh. That's so cool. <laughs> he's like, putting a light on for that guy is like ringing the dinner bell. <laughs> he's like a brand new, he looks teeny tiny. Teeny tiny. Yeah. Cool, so. Yeah, so anyway, so um, there was concern, there was concern about fresh water, all of the water holes we went out, we started testing the salinities yep. in their normal solution holes and wetlands, and it was sky high. It was ocean water type salinity right. or higher. And is that where the deer get their fresh water from? Yes. It is. So, so they go to watering holes. There's to get ponds fresh water. on these islands, there's solution holes spread throughout these islands, and that's where they get the fresh water that they drink. Wow. So we did make the decision, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service did make the decision to start feeding them or start uh, putting out. Watering pools, pools, watering yeah. stations spread throughout um, the communities and spread throughout the natural areas just to give all the wildlife because at the time it was a time where there was a lot of migratory birds going down yeah. uh, south and so all of these creatures we just were concerned about everything that would require fresh water. So we did that but we got rain rather quickly, quickly. within the first week or two, lots and lots of rain so we That's kept awesome. checking areas and the salinity started going back down more to normal and so that within like probably in the last couple weeks we retracted all the the artificial watering stations and the, the wildlife were able to you know get water in their normal locations Look, normal they, like kind of as as normal yes nice yeah, yeah. and so, so had there been any species that you're aware of that like uh oh, we don't. We haven't seen this since the storm. Anything well, like that? That's a good question. We haven't seen many marsh rabbits, lower keys marsh rabbits. So we are a little interested in in, in looking a little bit sure. about you know how did they do because apparently after Hurricane Wilma in 2005 there was yeah. some concern about and they their population seemed to go down <laughs> in this local area but then boost back up. Um, we do have larger population centers too down on Sugarloaf and. Um, Geiger Key okay. area, the Navy base area. So there's at least, you know, an area that didn't get and hit. That, super that hard. didn't get hit so right. so hard. Yeah. So okay. there, there's going to be rabbits down there, but we have seen several up in this area too. Yeah. So they are. Okay. Yes. Um, they're there. We just don't know how many of them. Okay. There's there was other parts. There's out on the beaches. The beaches were hardest hit. The okay. southern and eastern sides of the so island. So just like the slammed. mangroves and yeah, like buttonwoods even, and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, but even the Coastal beaches like Long Beach, which okay. is an area. Uh, there's a there's a lizard out there called the mole skink that okay. um, that we're worried that that mm. might have lost some of its habitat. So there's so we feel pretty comfortable. The key deer fared pretty well. Uh, we know we lost some, but there's other creatures we still haven't had a chance to do the full survey of like how they're yep. doing. Butterflies, yep. birds back on the backcountry islands, things like that. Okay. So we're hoping to do that next couple. So uh, what what further uh, conservation me measures um, anything any major initiatives going forth with uh, you guys are you guys had some property damage pretty oh, hardcore yeah. hardcore <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh, we lost our bunkhouse we lost our um, kind of so the quarters for interns and volunteers and visiting scientists got destroyed totally destroyed yes. yeah we could host like seven or eight people and mm. totally destroyed so it's going to be a rebuilding. The people and the, the habitats are in a rebuilding process, but yeah. um, probably nature's a little bit more resilient and fast acting. Yeah, they're than probably we are. they're probably get their act together before us, right? Right, but it is so neat to see that. I mean, this is just a small, small little piece of the whole ecosystem. But if you you know if you, if it's working out that these guys are doing okay, you can probably think that there's a lot of pieces of the puzzle that sure. are there as well. So. Yeah, moths are moths are what they're called a, an indicator group. So if, if you have moths and butterflies that are that are doing well, then um, that's a good indicator of the health of an ecosystem. So that, yeah. that's, and then birds eat caterpillars, yeah. and birds eat moths. That's and, right. And that's another little piece, and then bigger birds eat birds, and, and so there's <laughs> a lot of little pieces. Yeah. But it is always neat to see yellow sphinx. Wow. They've got their bright bright red hind wing. Oh yeah. See them? Wow. See them cruising. Very cool. Oh yeah. Well, I am so encouraged because I was skeptical. You think about, um, you know, there's there's animals that that or the moths that host plant on or the hosts or the trees that grow higher up. You know, you think they might have a stab at it. But uh, what you got there, Lorenzo? 
Is that an Imperial moth? That is so cool. That is so cool. I was here in a couple weeks after the storm on a, on a cleanup crew, and I think you saw the picture, I, I a box turtle. Yeah. Just walking, walking by in an area that was about a foot and a half above sea level. I'm like, how on earth does this box right. turtle make it, man? I know. The, <laughs> That's so crazy. Had, I saw two or three Lower Keys mud turtles, same thing, out same crossing thing. the roads, right within that, you know, five, six days after the hurricane, yep. too. Uh, Great. It's, it's Nature is resilient. If it, I mean, oh, yeah. this itself is just kind of a... It's kind of a breath of fresh air. It is. Well, Chrissy, thank you so much for your, for your time and your your energy, even for walking out here in the middle of uh, <laughs> this path in the middle of the night. Um, you know, I, I just appreciate you and all that you've uh, allowed for us to come and hang out here and and check out this stuff. It's been a it's been a wonderful journey so far, and uh, it's been an encouraging night. So we look forward to seeing what what shows up in the morning. Yeah, absolutely. Well, good luck and have fun, you guys. All right, thanks. Appreciate it. Well, the people, the habitats, and the ecosystems down in the Lower Keys have a long way to go to recover after Hurricane Irma made direct impact in September this year. Uh, but we are encouraged that things are starting to bounce back and bounce back rather quickly. They got a long way to go though. We're gonna, our hopes and prayers are with them as they recover. Um, and there's a lot of work to be done to determine the health of the moth populations in the Lower Keys. But Keys Moths is dedicated for the next few years to survey the Lower Keys and just have an account as to how the moth and butterfly populations are doing in the lower keys. So we'll st keep you guys posted as we get more information. But for now, it's time to head to the northern keys. That's all the time we have for today. We're heading to Key Largo and we're gonna put out lights there and you'll catch out our results from that in our next episode, so check that out. For now, subscribe to our channel. We'd love to have you subscribe and get more videos like this sent to you. Uh, if you have any comments or questions, please feel free to do so. We'd love to talk. Like our channel, share it with your friends. Check us out on Facebook and Instagram, and we have a great website where we're housing all of this information. It's www.keysmods.com. Until next time, enjoy South Florida. We'll see you in the Northern Keys.